How would you like to die like soldiers? We're now in 1813, we started in 1808, that's the Napoleonic Wars, and essentially the sharp stories are the Duke of Wellington fighting Napoleon in Spain. I think one of the main reasons for sharp success is that it is unashamedly different. We take it very seriously, the making of sharp. We don't take a cynical view that this is what the audience wants and we'll give it to them. People tell me how refreshing it is to have something different. Choosing the writer to adapt a series of books is a very, very tricky decision. And Owen Harris was chosen because he has a feeling for what I call the big screen. He has a feeling for the size and the scale of a big production. He has interpreted the Bernard Cornwell novels as if really they are John Ford books or John Ford films. And that's part of what we wanted. Uh, we shoot these films on Super 16. We shoot them in a widescreen format. We think of them as, as movies. And Owen is the man to write uh, with a, a great sense of flair, a great sense of style, and also with a sense of humour. There's everything in it, really. There's adventure, there's romance, there's battles, you know what I mean? And, and it, you know, we're not making something, we're not expecting people, to, we're not making the most profound thing that's ever been done. We, they're just the good stories, they're pretty simple stories, but they're good stories. And I think that's what, you know, people like to see. And, and it also it's set in the Napoleonic Wars and nobody tackles that sort of thing uh, these days. I read the books, Bernard Cornwall's books, which are, you know, basically, I think, you know, they're great tales, great yarns. Um, but what we have here, I mean, it's, it's a war comic. I mean, it's um, guts and glory and, uh, you know, to, to, to actually, you know, to, to put it all together, we work very, very quickly. Sharp, at the beginning of our series, he saves the Duke of Wellington's life from three French dragoons. And Wellington says to him, Sharp, you've done me a damn good turn. Now I'm going to do you a damn bad one. Uh, I'm making you an officer. And the outcome of that is that Sharp, who was a sergeant before this, is uh, not liked by the officers because he's not a gentleman. And equally, the soldiers don't like him because they don't think he's a proper officer. I think the major success is the major himself, uh, Sean Bean. Uh, he's a remarkable, resilient uh, performer. Uh, again, a very generous spirited man um, has made Sharp very accessible to a, a wide range of people because of his uh, common baseline that he's, he's arrived uh, to the officer class through a working class start. And that common man issue is very important, I think. Um, Sean's perfect for that. Well, he's got a lot of qualities that I admire, and he's worked his way up from the bottom, he's, he's come up and he's come up the hard way. And uh, that's something I admire myself. He's a fair man. He, he, he fights what, what he believes is right, you know, and uh, he's an hard hero. You know what I mean? He's a, he's a bit of an hard bastard. <laughs> Sean Bean, I think, has, has turned in a first rate performance, as Sharp. And I think the audience. They get fed up after a while of watching yet another police series, yet another medical series, yet another legal series. And it's lovely to give them some colour and some adventure. I mean, it's just I mean, absolutely fantastic as Sharp. He is Sharp. And I think if you talk to Sean, he would agree that it's one of his favourite roles. 
what I wanted with Sean Bean and Darren Malley was having a bit of political fun as well, of course, because I'm a very political writer and I always like rubbing it into Irish audience, particularly that the British Army in the peninsula, as at Waterloo, would be about, you know, 50%, 60% Irish. In fact, our orders were given in Gaelic at Waterloo and Wellington was Irish himself and his heads of intelligence were Irish. So I like reminding those of a provo persuasion in Ireland, you know, that, you know, that's how mixed we were. And the classic mix always has been very politically incorrect to say this, but First World War breaks and bears it out. British officers, Irish troops, and nothing can stand against you. I mean, that was the peninsula, that was Waterloo, the proof of the pudding is in the evening. Uh, and Daryl O'Malley and Sean Bean are perfectly complimented um, English North of Englander, working class guy, Irish kind of small farming, sort of peasant, spalpeen stock. And they make their own commentaries about Irish men and English men and the times are in it. And I was writing that series right through uh, the Troubles in the North. And I was always aware of it. I mean, I was never not aware. There's references in the early sharps uh, to uh, Harper, his difficulty in taking the king's shilling while his own country is occupied by British troops. There's also black jokes about it. when a regiment is particularly bad, Harper says, send him to Ireland, sir. You know, <laughs> you know, when they're really bad, he wants them to occupy Ireland. He's, uh, you know, an Irishman who's reluctantly um, working for working in the British Army, but he feels he can be, you know, whatever work he does, he can, you know, be proud of that work. But I think it applies not alone in 1811. But to this day of Irish people, you know, strangers in a strange land. And in the British Army then there were miles and miles and miles of them. It's, um, you know, it was difficult then, but I don't think the Irish who came to England in the 50s was any different from the British Army in 1811. Harper has no prospect of promotion in this army because of where he's from. And I think he sees a glory in, in this friend, this man that he loves and cares for. And uh, really he's a nursemaid and minds him and a friend. And, uh, you know, I think Sharp is lucky to have this man, Harper, who, who uh, is totally committed to him.